student. Today, we would be talking about their popular courses and their intakes, their fees, their COA deposits. Uh, so guys, I think MIT in itself doesn't need any introduction itself. Melbourne Institute of Technology, popularly known as MIT, is very popular among students, especially for their courses that are being offered, um, specifically for their Masters of Networking, Masters of Data Analytics, Masters of Engineering, their Telecommunications, and the Masters of Networking with specialization in cybersecurity itself. So guys, they offer a huge range of courses which are really popular among the students. Uh, they also have tie-ups with Federation University. Uh, now you can get the benefit of Federation University at MIT campus itself. Uh, today we are honored to have Sushma. Sushma Gurung is an Associate Director of Admissions and Marketing. Uh, we welcome you, Sushma. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you, Aksh. Um, you know, thank you for inviting me. Um, and, you know, I think I haven't done a Zoom session with Aussies this year. And I, we had one of our staff, I think it was um, Strada and Anoma who did the session uh, a few months ago. Um, yeah, but it's really nice, uh, you know, seeing you on Zoom. And, you know, thank you for giving us this opportunity. And, you know, I'll just briefly about, Mel, thank you for that wonderful introduction about MIT. Um, so just a little bit about MIT, um, as you would know, um, I don't want to bore you with the whole story, but um, MIT is, a, um, you know, registered by Tertiary Education Quality and Standards Agency. So uh, that's TEXA, um, and TEXA is the higher education regulator, so both um, private and public uh, universities. So, um, you know, whether you're studying at a private higher education provider like MIT or a public university, we're all regulated by the same, um, uh, you know, national regulator, which is TEXA. Um, and that's just briefly about um, MIT. And of course, we have campuses in Melbourne and Sydney. Um, you know, our, our Melbourne campus is right in the heart of uh, Melbourne CBD, uh, just two minutes walk from Melbourne Central Station. Um, um, and really, uh, you know, is easily accessible by all kinds of public transport, whether it's bus, train or tram. I don't think I need to go on about it because you guys are already in Melbourne. Um, and, and yeah, so, you know, we have wonderful facilities and, you know, the, the, the library, um, the support services, they're all available for students. Um, so when you come to MIT, um, you know, when your students come to MIT, they're not really compromising on quality. And so what we really look at is at MIT, we really offer, uh, you know, the high quality program, high quality support uh, services, but really affordable tuition fees. And that's what MIT is for. Um, and of course, we have a campus in Sydney and all the programs that's here in Melbourne is also available in Sydney. So if you're thinking of moving to uh, Sydney, um, then of course, you know, we have a campus in Sydney. Again, that's in the heart of uh, Sydney as well. Uh, you know, it's just, um, it's in Sussex Street. So um, all again, very um, short walk to Darling Harbour, um, Opera House and all that. Um, so really wonderful campus. We uh, renovated our Sydney campus last year with, uh, you know, so they have all kinds of, you know, study spaces, library, uh, you know, a lounge room. Um, so common areas. So all the campus, so the services and sub, uh, facilities that you get in Melbourne, you would get that in Sydney as well. So, you know, if you're thinking of moving to Sydney, the campus is there as well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Sushma. That was a very detailed introduction about MIT as well. MIT has always focused on their students a lot. And with their campuses located in heart of the city, I think that's the best uh, location and easily uh, approachable for students. They can very yeah. easily commute to those campuses which are located in the CBD campus itself. Um, uh, Sushma, before we proceed, I would like you to introduce yourself. I mean, tell us something about yourself. We have been with MIT for such a long time, and I think <laughs> nobody don't, can tell don't us. ask me. Don't ask me how long I've been there. Otherwise, you're going to guess my age. So, yeah, look, I, I've been um, working with MIT for a long time, and I've I've I've, I've done um, I've had different held different positions at MIT in my career. So, um, yeah, so you know, MIT is sort of like part of my, has become part of my life. So, um, 
you know, I started um, from admissions, then I moved on to marketing and recruitment, and now I'm um, overall in charge of the whole admissions and marketing team at MIT. So that includes, you know, we have a team in onshore, but we have a big team in offshore as well. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking after all the team in um, at MIT. So um, that's pretty much about me. <laughs> There's no better person to tell us about MIT rather than you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sushma. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, for I think MIT and their courses are well known among students. Its programs are continually being enhanced and updated to reflect the changes in the industry and to upkeep these programs up to date and make them motivational and interactive. And students, they do know that MIT is offering these uh, exclusive programs. But for those who do not know, Sushma, would you like to highlight the specific programs or popular courses that are being offered, especially for the November intake, the upcoming November intake? Yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks for that introduction. So, yes, we have um, the, our courses, really popular programs, our networking programs, so our Bachelor of Networking and Master of Networking. Um, so, with our Bachelor, both networking program, Bachelor and Master, um, so students have an option to major in cybersecurity, uh, which has become very popular, uh, you know, since it's been about 12 months now. Um, and in both, and then they can either major in cybersecurity or they can just do a general networking degree. So depending on what they want to do, a lot of students are now because of cyber, because of the issues with cybersecurity, cyber attacks, and really obviously cybersecurity is really in trend. But the other part of networking is also quite popular as well. So the great thing this uh, about this program is um, it's sort of like if you love computer, if you love fixing, if you do, love doing networks, if you love networking side of information technology, then absolutely this is the program that they could do um, because it doesn't involve a lot of coding and software engineering because some people don't like them. Um, and it's a great program to do. And of course, in terms of employability, there's a lot of jobs, whether you're talking about networking or cybersecurity. Um, um, and then, uh, you know, we have other programs in business, um, Bachelor of Business. So our Bachelor of Business, although um, it may not be very popular with, uh, you know, uh, postgraduate students, and again, with international students that are more postgraduate than interna uh, undergraduate, but in our Bachelor of Business, we have um, accounting, management, marketing, and recently uh, we've added digital marketing. So the great thing about the digital marketing is it's really for people uh, who really want to develop their career in marketing. So now, uh, of course, we have more traditional marketing, but the digital marketing combines both the tra uh, traditional aspect as well as the, the new um, marketing, which is, you know, which could be, uh, you know, Google, Google Analytics, um, you know, how to in um, how maximizing um, search engine optimization, search engine marketing. So students really learn about, um, you know, how to, um, uh, uh, you know, write content for um, online material and making sure that, you know, the, the, the user, when they come to your website, really enhancing how to improve their experience when you visit their website. So they learn all the tricks and traits of digital marketing. So it's, it's really, um, but they also learn about the more traditional forms of print marketing. Um, so it's a great program for students who are looking for a career in marketing, you know. Um, so, I, and of course, you know, we have accounting, management and marketing. So that's for uh, Bachelor of Business. Um, and then uh, we have other programs, uh, Master of Telecommunication Engineering and Bachelor of Engineering Telecommunication Technology. So both of these programs, the great thing about um, all our program, particularly our engineering programs, is that uh, we have internships. So students really get the opportunity to work in their related field while they're studying. And this is very important because um, a lot, some of our students have been able to get job um, in the organization where they did their internship after finishing their internship. Um, and also to really, um, uh, apply your theory into practice as well, which is lacking in a lot of programs these days. You know, students get to study in theory, but theory just becomes theory if you don't get the opportunity to practice. So that's um, that's 
a great thing about our Master of Engineering and Bachelor of Engineering program. Uh, they are, again, fully accredited by Engineers Australia. So, um, you know, so students when they, um, um, and, and in fact, MIT is one of very few private higher education provider with EA accreditation. Um, so, um, you know, when they finish their Master of Engineering or Bachelor of Engineering, they get um, EA accreditation. That means they can work as an engineer, not, not only in Australia, but in countries where Australia has um, that um, um, agreement with, you know, it's, um, so they can, it's internationally recognized degree. Um, and of course, our IT programs, our networking, Bachelor of Networking, and our recently introduced program, Master of Data Analytics, um, all our IT programs, um, they are, again, it also has that um, industry-based project. So what that means is that MIT really helps students to, uh, you know, get projects uh, from our partner organizations. Um, sorry. Um, so partner organizations, and they do that project while they're studying. Um, and it's really important. Uh, the project is really important because they really, students learn about how, uh, you know, the real industry, the, the real, whether it's IT or whether it's accounting, how, it, how to apply what they studied in their classroom into work life. Like, uh, you know, whether they're working at MIT or whether they're working with Aussies or any other organization, as you know, theory is very different to practice. And really giving that experience while they're studying is what we focus at. Um, yeah, so that's a little, little bit about our programs. Yeah. So it's not just theory, it's the practical and internship components that are associated with the, the course curriculum as well, which would add a great value to your resume yeah. uh, once you complete this course altogether. So I think that's that's a win-win thing for a student. As an international student, if I'm looking for a course, the only thing I would focus on is what is the core value it would provide as an outcome for my resume. So I think uh, getting that practical exposure retains in our mind for pretty long time rather than just the theoretical components, which is yeah. very, very excellent. Absolutely, um, yeah. And of course, you know, having ACS accreditation, Engineers Australian accreditation is very important for their degree as well, because you don't just want to be, uh, you know, working in Australia. Sometimes you might change your mind and decide to go to Europe or somewhere, America, or back to your home country. So having that um, industry accredited program really helps you to, um, you know, so your degree is transferable no matter where you go to. Um, so that's also very important. And of course, that's going to help you with, um, uh, you know, um, applying for your skills assessment. That's one of the things, but um, there's other benefits to having industry accreditation. And, that's, and that means your degree is transferable in other countries as well. Um, and, and, you know, MIT is, again, uh, a very few private higher education provider with ACS accreditation when it comes to IT program. Uh, when you go to ACS website and you search for ACS accredited institutions, all the institutions you see there are public universities and MIT is among them. So you could see this is a testament of the quality that uh, students get at MIT. Yeah. MIT. MIT has always been very good when it comes to their core structures and has added values uh, yeah. for the students altogether when it comes to their accredited, accredited courses altogether. Yeah. Uh, Sushma, further moving on, can you tell me what are the number of subjects that student needs to enroll for the November intake? Like we know November intake's upcoming, students might not have enrolled in now, they might be looking for intake. So what's the subject load that students are looking for? Um, so normally, I mean, it, it all depends on their overall profile. So for example, if student has a break in study this whole year, then we would expect them to actually study full-time load, as you would know, because they already have a gap of, you know, one semester or two semesters this year. So we really, students should study full-time load, otherwise it could impact their visa later on when they apply for a visa application. Um, and really to comply with the visa, because we understand start of the intake, a lot of students may have missed out or decided to defer for various reasons. We understand that it's the pandemic um, and everyone is going through it. Uh, but um, if they haven't studied at all this year and they want to now start in November, we students really should study full time. 
uh, they shouldn't be looking for a reduced load again because that's actually going to extend their course unnecessarily. Um, you know, again, they, they, it could uh, impact their visa later on. Um, so, uh, but generally, if you have a student who studied uh, this year and they still want to catch up, option is available there for uh, students to really um, look for reduced load if they're having, um, you know, if they're having difficulties that's related to COVID. So that could be financial and other issues. Uh, but um, so the, for example, Master of Networking has three subjects per semester. Um, and they, for some reason, uh, they don't want to study uh, three, um, there is an option for them to study two. Uh, but they need to really provide a reason why they're, you know, requesting for reduced load. Um, and if they're doing, um, you know, courses with four units, they can apply for three units. Again, they need to provide reasons why they want to do a reduced load. Um, the great thing about MIT is that students don't have to pay everything at once. So they can do, uh, they can pay the fee on installment as well. So, you know, uh, you can pay for your one unit fee on enrollment and then sign up for a payment plan as you go and you pay as you go as well. So um, that option is available to all students here. Yeah. That's a very good option to students, those who are looking to study, actually. They don't have fun. They might be financially, they might be facing financial hardships, but yeah. they can enroll at one unit. Uh, they can enroll at all the units, but make the payment for one unit and then have a consecutive payment plan. So yeah. even their studies won't get hampered at all with that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's a very good support that's being provided to students altogether, if, especially for students who are at master's level. Not every university is providing a payment plan options. So MIT has done a very good option, uh, has provided a very good option of payment. Yeah, plan. yeah. And, and also, of course, you know, when we, um, uh, when we moved on to the online uh, system early this year because of COVID, um, you know, all our classes moved online, but there was a lot of uncertainty among students because, you know, this is a, this was a new model and no one, uh, no one knew because, oh, you know, online, who knows what's going to happen. And we've all experienced how things can go. Uh, you know, drawn online because, you know, you're not, you're unsupervised, there is really no structure, uh, but really when we uh, went online, we really made sure that the students really get that, you know, almost a similar level of experience that you would normally get on campus. Although it's not an ideal situation, I must say, you know, of course, we would love to have our students back on campus. We would love to welcome them back to campus, but given the situation for the health and safety of everyone, um, so um, the online campus has been a really smooth transition for us. Um, you know, um, our classes are actually live on Zoom. So it's like you and I talking now. So um, it, they, they are pre-recorded, but, you know, students can be, a, you know, a, participate in like online discussions just like you and I are doing. So they are really not seeing any much of a difference whether they're studying face-to-face or whether they're studying online, particularly if, you, if you're doing a lecture, right? If it's a lecture, then lecture is a lecture, whether you are physically on campus or whether you are online. So it's a lecture anyway. Um, so they are, and, and we, the feedback from our students is that they are really enjoying online classes now. And the reason why they're enjoying it is because of the flexibility, you know? They can just wake up and they don't even need to get ready and start attending online classes, right? So that's what they love about. And of course, you know, we make sure that our students have, we track up their attendance, we track up their participation. So we have all the tracking system where, um, you know, if students are not attending classes, then we contact them. So there is a tracking mechanism in place to make sure that the students are participating in class. Um, so we've done very well to retain all our students um, in July intake, even if we went online you know, our retention is no difference to the previous uh, intakes or last year. Um, and because that's because we have a lot of support programs and our student services team, for example, organize um, events uh, from time to time through Zoom as well. So they have Zoom meetups with students every Friday or uh, at the start of the pandemic, really to give that support because, you know, we know international students are going through a lot of hardships now, you know, they are away from home and they may have lost their part-time jobs. And of course, it's a very challenging time for them. So uh, our, our student services team really make sure that they get that support that they need. 
Um, and of course, our counselors, um, they are available there Monday to Friday. So students can do, um, you know, see face-to-face -face Zoom counseling session. Um, so, um, and of course, the online resource materials, they don't need to be on campus to access our library resources. So uh, we have, MIT has access to thousands and thousands of uh, you know, reference materials and textbooks online. And all they need to do is open their um, Moodle account and they have access to thousands of reference materials at the tip of your finger. So um, really, I mean, um, the transition has been quite smooth. Um, uh, there were a few challenging in the beginning and students were not sure, but now they're loving it. Um, and now the challenge is, you know, once this is settled, bringing them back to campus, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's a fun learning mode for them. And now it's going to be challenging once they're back to campus itself. I mean, Absolutely, I can grab yeah. a coffee and then I can study. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MIT has always offered a range of services such as career development, counseling, as Sushma discussed, and personal and emergency support. So they have been there for their students altogether, be that COVID time, non-COVID time. You guys have always been supporting students a lot with their internship, with their support, with their counseling. So be yeah. that their study or their mental health, you guys have always focused a lot on your international students. And you guys have come up with payment plan options to help them and facilitate them as well. Uh, Sushma, what is the COA deposit that a student is looking for for their November intakes? So um, the minimum deposit we're looking for is, um, if they can, one unit fee. Um, so for example, if they're doing Master of Networking, one unit fee is 3,000 for three units. Um, if they're doing MPA, it's probably 2,000 or about that, uh, yeah. So uh, roughly around a mark of two to three thousand dollars. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good price for someone who's securing a COE for a master's level program altogether. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving further, uh, we all know, everybody knows that MIT has partnership with Federation University as well. And Federation University the courses are being offered at MIT campuses. Would you like to highlight some courses offered by MIT for Federation as well? Um, yeah, so with Federation University, we offer a similar programs that MIT offer, but slightly different as well. Um, the popular programs at the moment, of course, are information technology, but we also offer the, um, you know, accounting programs as well, both in undergraduate and postgraduate level. Uh, but BIT, Bachelor of Information Technology, um, Bachelor of Information Technology, Business Information Systems, uh, Bachelor of Commerce Accounting, they're the programs that we offer for undergraduate students. Um, and for postgraduate um, MPA, uh, Master of Technology, Software Engineering, Master of Technology, Enterprise System and Systems and Business Analytics. Um, so I have to say, uh, Master of Technology, MTech programs are quite popular with students, postgraduate students. Um, and the great thing about this program is also, you know, uh, Federation University IT programs are ACS accredited. Um, and for a university degree, we are really offering them um, really affordable tuition fee, as affordable as any university could. Um, and, you know, students are still studying at MIT. They don't have to travel to Ballarat or go to regional Victoria. They can, st they can study at MIT and get the Federation University degree. Um, and, you know, if, if you have student, if you're a student who really love programming and software engineering, um, love coding, then of course, Master of Technology Software Engineering program is great for you. But if you are, uh, you know, someone who just loves, uh, you know, who wants to become an analyst, then Master of Te Technology Enterprise Systems and Business Analytics would be for you. Um, and same thing goes for BIT, Bachelor of IT. It's a very general, uh, general IT degree. Um, students learn about um, all aspects of IT, which includes networking, net includes um, software engineering, includes programming, website development, multimedia. Basically, this combines all areas of information technology. So these are really great program. And what we offer is the quality and really the afford and the affordability as well. So you're studying a university degree um, and tuition fees for Bachelor of IT or Bachelor of IT Business Information Systems is under 9,500. And we're talking about Master of IT with fees around 10,000 approximately. So with the scholarships that we are offering students that 
Um, you know, they have this really great opportunity for to really study university degree at MIT. Um, and, and, you know, they are saving a lot of money, but they're not compromising on quality yet. So students are getting wide range of technological related courses and that too at a very minimal price or a very mm, com a good price for the students itself, which is very Absolutely. Good. So I'll tell you how much the fee for Federation University is. So, um, so for BIT, it's Bachelor of IT and Bachelor of IT Information Systems is 9,100, which is almost like 9,000. Um, and I don't think you'll find any university with, uh, you know, that are offering this uh, sort of fees. Um, and then Master of Technology programs, whether it's enterprise systems and business analytics or software engineering, it's 10,000. So because of COVID, we have reduced our fees even further this year. And this fee will continue next year as well. Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a very good price for the students to pay, especially at a bachelor's and a master's level. And I don't think so any other university is offering at that price at all. Yeah. Moving further, Sushma, uh, more major question that students ask is, while uh, there is a leisure of working or studying from home and uh, having the facility of just waking up and attending your lectures, but suppose if they face any issues, can they have one-on-one -on -one interactions with the professors and Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so th that's, that's a great thing about this, uh, you know, so they can just call MIT as if they are studying anyway, you know, they can just say, Hey, I'm having this issue, you know, can you help? So the, you know, our telephone operators are there to help them. Uh, but they can, um, but if they're having an academic issues, they can make an appointment through Moodle and our online system where students, I've seen students making appointment with lecturers and, they will they can get help through zoom just like you know we are doing a session at the moment so they are really not in fact it could even be better because they can get the service when they want you know whereas in physical then you have to go there make an effort to go to campus and make an appointment and all that so right now it's all online so it's much easily available you know when that you can make sure that you know you can allocate your time and book your appointment accordingly to talk to your teacher um, lecturer and whether it's lecturer or tutor yeah that's really good that saves them travel time as well so they can very easily just book uh, everything through their mood through your moodle and uh, get it yeah started. That's yeah. a very good help that's being provided to students altogether. Um, before we move further, uh, we do know MIT has offered students relief. So there was, uh, uh, there have been uh, sort of like financial hardship plans that were uh, started by MIT. I think you guys had $1 million fund allocated towards financial hardship, which was utilized over the time of COVID for your international students as well, which I don't think so most of the students, newcomers would be knowing about it, but MIT had $1 million financial hardship plans for their existing students, which they had utilized over the time of the COVID itself. Would you like to tell us something about it, Sushma? Yeah, so thanks for that, Aksh, because yeah, when um, back in April, when uh, just at the start of COVID, um, MIT allocated uh, $1 million uh, financial hardship funds to really make sure that the students get the help. Uh, of course, it's a small help that we can offer because the problem is getting bigger. But at the same time, we really understand what students are going through. And it's a small, uh, you know, support from our financial support from MIT to offer to our existing MIT students who maybe go, who might have gone through, uh, might have lost a job or, you know, um, and really to offer a, temporary relief. Um, so the fund was allocated and it has been, uh, you know, it has helped a lot of students uh, who are currently studying at MIT. Uh, yeah, so that fund has uh, been really helpful. And, you know, um, so students were receiving up to $500 um, cash in their bank account. Um, and of course, you know, uh, things like um, uh, the, um, uh, installment payment, they're also part of the, um, you know, the financial hardship support. Uh, you know, we have some of the students who can't pay anything at all. So there are some sort of students who are getting that sort of help. So we're really trying to support them, even if they can't pay, because um, at the moment, this is a, a, you know, global crisis, and they may be having difficulties in their home countries as well. Uh, so because of that, even there are some students who are getting that help uh, without paying uh, much. So um, it's not just providing them cash, uh, you know, uh, incentives, but really helping them throughout their academic journey at MIT. Yeah. 
I think that understanding that bond that you share with your students is really precious. Yeah. So, uh, MIT and the students, they have correlated their bond and be that a minute help, a little help or even a support or even a counseling means a lot when you are uh, when you're going through these troubled times. And I think COVID, yeah. COVID has been an eye opener for all of us yeah. uh, where our interactions have been, where we have started paying attention to even minimal things that have caused us a bit of leisure and happiness altogether. Yeah. Uh, I think, Sushma, everybody knows about the fee structure and everything, but students are more excited to know about the scholarships that are being offered. Uh, would you like to highlight something about the scholarships that are being offered by MIT? Of course. So, um, so you know, we have, um, so at the moment we have scholarship, which is a standard scholarship that we're offering to students who meet our entry requirements. So there is no specific requirement. If you're a student and if you meet MIT's entry requirement, whether it's English or academic, uh, then you are eligible for the scholarship. For example, if you're doing, uh, if, you, if you're applying for Master of Networking, uh, you're getting more than $4,000 scholarship overall. So the tuition fee for the Master of Networking is $9,000. Uh, for um, Bachelor of Engineering Telecommunication, again, for engineering program is 10,000. So they are getting $6,000, $7,000 scholarship for the duration of their program. Um, MPA is 8,500, um, really making it really affordable for students. Um, yeah, so these are the things that we have this year. And uh, we lowered our fee uh, in July because of the pandemic as well, yeah. Well, that's really good to hear, Sushma especially with, I think in today's session has been very informative for the students, those who want to study online, those who want excessive student supports, those who want good scholarships, those who really want to go into technological courses, and then you have payment plans, and then you have uh, uh, full study load and part study load. You guys have been helping students all together. I think it's been a very informative session for all the international students that are out there. And I think with the wide range of programs that are being offered by MIT, be that in business, accounting, management, marketing, information technology, computer networking, or telecommunication engineering, it's been of a great, uh, I mean, it's, it's a pretty interesting course for students to undertake when it comes to their November intake. So in case you might have missed on to other intakes, guys, it's high time that you should get enrolled for the November intake. That's I mean, right. you, you cannot go without studying. Being an international student, you have to study. So, yeah. but yes, uh, MIT is always there to support you throughout your journey, be that uh, whatever hardship you are facing through, even we are over here to help you out. So together we can come up with a very good plan for you guys to continue your studies. Uh, when it comes to for your November intake or for Feb intake. So whichever intake you're looking forward to, do contact us. Uh, Sushma, before we uh, before we end this session, would you like to say something to the, to our students out there? Uh, you know, th thank you. Um, first of all, thank you, Aksh, for organizing this um, session. And um, really, you know, we want to welcome you all to MIT and we're there for you to support you. And, um, you know, we have three intakes in a year. Uh, the next uh, upcoming intake is November, but if you're not sure about November, you know, March intake is just around the corner. You can really start applying now, you know, um, and, you know, when you apply and when you accept your offer, then you become part of our MIT community, you know, and, you know, we would love to have you back to MIT and hopefully meet you one of those days. Um, yeah, either this year or next year. And thank you for giving this wonderful opportunity. And it, you know, it's really nice to catch up with you. And of course, you know, talk to your students as well. Thank you so much, Sushma. It was an honor of having you over here. And I don't think so anybody better could have explained MIT with you being in MIT for such a long time. I think you know crux of MIT and you know in and out of MIT when it comes to their student support services and even how to link with your students all together. So thank you so much for coming over here, Sushma. We are honored You're to- welcome. Have you. And I think students, students would have students have gained so much with this session. Your fees, your uh, individual uh, per subject fee, your courses that are being offered. 
So thank you so much, Sushma, for such information. Uh, to all the international students who are out there, still, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave your questions in the comments, and we would be more than happy to answer those questions. You guys can get in touch with us. Our offices are not yet open, unfortunately, in Victoria, but we are just a call away. Like MIT said, they are just a call away. We are also a call away, guys. <laughs> so get in touch with us, and uh, we are more than happy to help you out. Thank you, Sushma. Thank you. Right. So much. Thanks, Aksha. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.